Hey, well, welcome. Today, we have the Cohiba Makazar. It's a 6x50, and with it, we have the Plantation Isle of Fiji Rum. Ooh, yeah, rum! <laughs> Thanks for tuning into the 2020 season of Cigars, Liquor, and More. Thanks As we join our buddies in. Bill Howdy. and our other brother Daryl. Smoke up, Johnny. In the backyard speakeasy as they discover their thoughts on cigars, liquor, and anything else that comes to mind. Did you lose your cigar? Um, yeah, I lost my cigar. God, I hope you're not sitting on it. There it is. It rolled off the table. <laughs> now, if that was a yeah, square, a square press, press, you wouldn't have that problem. <laughs> shout out to Nick. Definitely shout out to Nick. <laughs> Uh, Nick's a great guy. I love Nick. <laughs> All right. So apropos that, that that moment was. So what is this Macazar made of, you ask? Yes, I do ask. <laughs> so this is a U.S. Connecticut wrapper. It is a Dominican Republic and Nicaraguan filler. A U.S. Connecticut binder. MSRPs for $12. Although I've seen even higher prices for it. The uh, Plantation Isle of Fiji Rum. Isle of Fiji. Uh, they describe Which it as... Which you have been to. I have. I have been to the Isle of Fiji. Uh, they describe it as having aromas of molasses and pear with notes of apple, banana, gooseberry, and spicier with nutmeg and vanilla. Hint of smoke at the end. Rich and round... With a vanilla fudge, honey, ginger, and fruity notes of coconut. This is bottled at 80 proof, and you get all of that for $27. It is fruity in both aroma and taste. I I have even hacked out half of that description. <laughs> that, that was that was somebody got verbose with that, that was, didn't they? <laughs> that, was much, that was much more than that. So the the Cohiba Macazar, they did a little, little image there for you. Uh, good looking, good looking. Uh, oh, it is. Good looking cigar. I like the dark, dark, yeah, it is. dark. Oh, wrapper. nice and dark. Mm. Very generous cap. Thank you, Cohiba. Yeah. <laughs> um, I know you did it just for me. Yes, for just for us. Mm. What are you getting on the cold draw there? Fire. Mm. You like the cigar before we even hit the music. Yes. <laughs> I, I got to tell you, I'm just not interested in the cold draw. I may be, uh, what, what was your phrase, a Philistine? But mm. I, I'm just not interested in a cold draw. I'm glad you are, because somebody should be in this podcast. But luckily, it doesn't have to be me. So the sort of just dampened... Uh, that this, cap- this, by the way, mm. the, this little correction I'm doing is not a problem with the cigar. It was a problem with my <laughs> light. Uh, because as I was in the middle of lighting it, we had the cue to the music. So I stopped <laughs> lighting to, to, to find, you know, the play button on the music. So, uh, this is not a problem with the cigar at all. This is totally a problem with me and my timing of lighting the cigar prior to the music. Mm. There's, there's a lesson there. What, what, what would that be? <laughs> Light it up before you start talking. Oh, for God's <laughs> sake. <laughs> Light it up before we even start the show. Yeah, that's right. Uh, well, the, the cold draw is, um, it, there's not a lot on the lips. It's not a lot, a lot of spice. Um, it's, it's pretty mild, actually. And uh, I've had one of these before, so I know it's not how it turns out. Mm. But I do like it. There's some of them. There's some of the cold draws. You could just sit there and pull on that. It's just so flavorful. Um, not all of them, though. No, uh, not all of them. So let me let me get this. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and light it up now. Well, okay. it's about time. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Relax. Oh no. What? I had one of these before, and I did not write it in my journal. Are you kidding me? What's wrong with me? I did not bring my journal. But I know it's in my journal. I. Uh, well, what the. What's wrong with me? We probably were just having a relaxing night, and you did not write it in your journal. Yeah, yeah, probably so. Mm. Uh, that kind of stuff happens, you know? Mm, it lights up nice right away. I love that about a cigar. Oh, it's nice and easy, yeah. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't fight you at all. <laughs> I like the pop. Oh, the pop's wonderful. 
It's going to be bad when we have a... The Four Roses had a better pop. A, a cork <laughs> shortage. <laughs> it did. Had a louder pop, for sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow, there's a lot of vanilla on that nose. A lot. Of, oh, you know what? It is fruity, too. It is fruity. Yeah. Oh, very fruity. I wouldn't necessarily say... I don't smell the coconut. Normally, I pick pear, out coconut right away. No, I, I didn't get any coconut. I don't even know what gooseberry is. Not I'm, a clue. <laughs> the, I think, I think, I the think aroma, it's a made-up fruit. <laughs> I, I think the aroma I'm getting is the apple and the, uh, and the, and the pear and vanilla. Yeah, there is a touch of apple in there. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of apple in there. Hmm. Well, for me, I'm, I'm very sensitive to apple. I don't know why, because I don't even like apples that much. Oh, that's lovely. There's a lot of different kinds of apples. There is, there is. I just mean apple in general. Just very, I can smell You just haven't apple. tried enough to find the one that, that, that is made for you. That yeah, might be true. Okay, so I'll, I'll give, I forgot to show the people the... Uh, the bottle of the Fiji. Oh, don't forget that. So Plantation is a it's a rum we like. It is. We generally uh, drink the Plantation Five. Uh, almost all. I mean, all the all the variations of of Plantations we have really enjoyed. Ooh, what about Jamaica? I think we were disappointed in Plantation Jamaica. Oh, I wiped that from my memory. <laughs> but uh, I, I wasn't going to stop me from trying another one. And I'm oh, glad. Hell no. I'm glad because this one <laughs> has a lot of interesting flavors. Yeah. Now the the rum that you brought back from Fiji, nothing like this. Nothing like this at all. <laughs> not at all. Not even the slightest. The rum we brought back from Fiji was a very early incarnation. It was only sixty proof, and it was very, very sweet. And uh, that's probably why my wife liked it so much. <laughs> um, but I mean, I liked it. Don't get me wrong. I liked it a lot too. It was very good. But uh, I I hazard to say I like this better than that first bottle we brought back from Fiji. And I don't even know if they're making that anymore. I've not seen well, it anywhere. I, I think this one, I mean, it's it's been a while. But from my recollection, I think this one has more uh, more flavor, more aroma to it mm -hmm. than uh, than the Fiji, the, the rum you bought, brought back from Fiji. Yeah, I think the other thing that was nice in the rum we brought back from Fiji was had a little bit of a coffee flavor to it too, which definitely landed well with my wife. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, but this one, lots of apples, lots of pear. Um, it's going to be really hard to pick out the hint of smoke at the end since we're smoking and go, yeah, there's smoke at the I, end. Uh, well, I, <laughs> I, I tried it and I, uh, I didn't immediately get the smoky flavor at the end. Uh, but I definitely got fruity out of both the flavor and the aroma. Yeah. Definitely a lot of apples it's, in there for It's me. quite, it's quite pleasant. It is. And I thought, so the, the, uh, the kiwi is a little bit more of a strong, Cigar, but not so strong. I think this lands in a medium category. Um, I mean, it's got the Connecticut wrapper. Although a dark Connecticut wrapper. I mean. Oh, yeah. It does, it's, they must have aged it's this It's gorgeous thing. and dark. They must yeah. have aged this thing. Yeah. But darkness of wrapper does not necessarily equate to strength. No, but, so. but it definitely equates to age, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. Hmm. Well, it's starting up real nice. Ah. Uh, I know, right? Pleasant. It's always nice to sit down. Pleasant. Strike up a match, light a stick, have a little drink. Don't use drink. matches anymore. <laughs> it's a I'm coining a phrase. <laughs> torches, baby, torches. Mm. Oh, show the people your the the extra <laughs> setting, the power setting you have on your torches. Oh yeah, yeah. Show, show them the normal. This and, is uh, it's not a light cigar with that, but it goes to eleven. <laughs> yeah. I, I bet it goes through the fuel pretty quick there, you, too. You can send your eyebrows off with that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, so this is one of those, uh, they call them micro-torches, but yep. it's um, also known as a creme brulee torch. Yep. And uh, you can get them on Amazon in the cooking section or in the hardware section. And they list them as both, micro-torch no, or they're, they're not great for travel. No, oh, no. But at your house? Doesn't fit in your pocket. To it's light a cigar yeah. at your house, it is, they are the best lighters you can buy. And they're cheap. I mean, 15, this one 15, 15 to 20 $15. bucks. <laughs> uh, uh, but they last forever. Unlike unlike an actual cigar lighter, which lasts maybe a year, and then you have to get another one because oh, it broke. I just thought you meant the reservoir. That's the other nice thing about these things. No. This oh, reservoir the lasts like huge. a year. Yeah. I, it's like a, I think, I think the last one I read, it was a 10 gram reservoir. So wow. They're not messing around. It, yeah, but uh, I don't even care about having to <clears throat> refill 
cigar lighters uh, that often. I, I don't care about that. I care about them working. Yeah, and I love these those things. Those things break easy. It does seem fast. like it. Uh, it's like or they the, get fouled or something. It, it's like they're the the brittle bone disease of the cigar world of the of the lighter world. Uh, whereas these things, these old micro torches, which you can pick up anywhere. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Harbor Freight, Home Depot, Amazon. Yeah, my first everywhere. one was at Harbor Freight. The reason I got this one is Walmart, because I brought everywhere. it with me to Florida and I left it in my, my brother's uh, care. And uh, now he has one. And uh, That's good. We'll use it when we go there. Yeah. So he's like, hey, have you left yet? Yeah, no. What, what, yeah, we're in Alabama. <laughs> he's like, oh, you left your you left your lighter. I'm like, well, it's yours now. I'll get a new lighter. Yep. Oh, Fifteen dollars, not exactly a huge. Keep loss. it, keep it at your house. Yeah, no. I again, I I love these things. They they just they work. And when it comes down to everything, you just want stuff to work. Mm-hmm. And these things work. No fuss, no muss. Now the this this is the uh, this is the newer version that you get from Harbor Freight, and it now ha- <clears throat> has a. A safety. Yeah, a, a locking thing that you have to do something with in order to get it to light, uh, which I just popped right off. <laughs> yeah, the, my last one I just mm-hmm. glued down. Yeah, you glued down. Uh, I completely one, removed it. This one flips back and forth, and you can you can leave it in on mode uh, all the time. You don't have to, so you don't have to mess with the safety. Um, Otherwise, I, I was planning on gluing it. <laughs> <laughs> They're just, yeah, we're adults. We don't need that. Yeah, I'm um, not accidentally burning my creme brulee. So I'm I'm gonna bring a I'm I'm, I'm a Texas boy, mm. um, and uh, so on my Instagram because I'm doing Instagram now. On my Instagram, I have been following uh, the Texas Historical Commission, and I like it because they have they they have a bunch of different things that they they post on their Instagram, uh, and this is one that I had thought I had heard of, but I couldn't remember specifically. <laughs> Um, so in, in West Texas, near Odessa, uh, outside of the town, I'm, I'm going to screw the town's name up, <laughs> Mohanas, Monhanas, uh, sand dunes up to 50 feet tall shift and change in the wind. 50 feet. Well, we know where we're going to get our next set of concrete. There you go. <laughs> uh, they said that, uh, people first encountered this, uh, this part of a 200 mile long dune mm. uh, dune field at least 12,000 years ago. Indigenous people hunted game here and harvested acorn and mesquite beans. Comanche and Apache groups, among other tribes, met and camped around the dunes. Where, uh, where is this? This is uh, down near Odessa, which okay. is, um, well, from your perspective, well, we call it West Texas, but from your perspective, it's probably uh, Southwest Texas. Okay. So if you go down to San Antonio and go, and go west. southwest, southeast from there, or southwest from there. Oh, even more southwest than San Antonio. You'll, you'll hit Odessa. Okay. <laughs> well, I've heard of Odessa. I just wasn't quite sure where it was. Yeah, T.I. had a facility there. I remember that. Mm-hmm. Never been. Me either, uh, but I've worked with quite a few people that came from there, uh, including one guy, uh, Poor guy. He went from uh, where's the where's the where are the Packers from, and the cheese. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Green, yeah Bay. Green Bay. What's the state? <laughs> Wisconsin. Wisconsin. So I was gonna. I know. So, I'm, I'm sorry. I was gonna let you struggle. It was fun. There. I just liked watching the look on your face. <laughs> so he's from there. That's where he was born mm-hmm. and raised. Went to school. Graduated college. And everything. And then he got his first job at TI in Odessa, Texas. <laughs> Poor guy. Anyway, uh, in the 1880s, the Texas and Pacific Railroad chose the town of Mohannes as a stopping place, setting up the area for modern development. Uh, on November 23rd, 1957, Mohannes Sand Hill State Park opened to the public. Uh, the 3,840-acre park rents out discs for sledding down the sand dunes. Wow. Okay. Uh, visitors can also hike, camp, and bring horses. They're and steep, then. I even printed you a picture. Wow. And there's somebody with a little round disc sled. Yep. People going up it like it's a snow hill. <laughs> yeah, and this particular picture, uh, somebody posted on Pinterest, and that was from last year. So they have a, they have a, it's a park. 
It's a it, yeah. the The area became a state park. It doesn't look like a park though. It just looks like a giant sand dune. Yeah, for two hundred uh, miles, miles, apparently. <laughs> Ooh, I had no idea that was which there. is just a little spit of land in Texas. <laughs> yeah, 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 actually, it kind of is. <laughs> now that you mention it. Yeah, but if you're ever that way, and it's it's uh it's right off the it's right off uh the freeway that goes go through Odessa, so uh, if you're driving that way, you can stop off. Uh, it turns out that I mean there are uh, turns out there are other sand dunes around that same area, but this is the largest. Cool, <laughs> that is pretty cool. I've never slid down a sand dune. Uh, me either. Don't you have to be careful not to be covered in sand though? Probably not. Sand's pretty dense. Okay. I mean, you've walked on beaches before, right? No, I was just picturing an cars avalanche drive on that covered me over. and I, 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 I don't think they're sand. Sahara tall. <laughs> okay. 50 feet, that's plenty of the die-in, though. Because people people, <laughs> yeah. people break into, uh, you know, construction things, and they go play in the sand, and then they find the body, you know. and Yeah. I, I'm like, is this like that? Because I, you know, probably not. Because it's not, a, a, it's probably not quite as pyramidal as we we put in construction mm. sites but wow that's pretty cool so lots of things in texas mm-hmm. that that's one of them um uh, uh, you know we went to we went to south padre and enjoyed the enjoyed the, the oh, beach and the I water like, and all i do that. like south padre yeah and then you know a few hundred miles away is a <laughs> is a sand dune there's a Spider, I think, trying to be a friend. A or is that a fly? It's a fly. Don't uh, worry about him. I couldn't tell from this distance. Uh, so a little bit of news, uh, international news. The uh, how do you say that word? Air, Air Carbo. Oh, the Air Carbo. The the, 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 the 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 huge telescope. Tel- yeah, the uh, in in Puerto Rico, uh, it has finally collapsed. The radio um, telescope. The radio telescope. Yeah, big and uh, featured in the movie Contact. I think it was. Uh, oh, they've used it a lot. Actually. Oh, it's it's, it's been, been in a lot of yeah. movies. Oh, it's even been in some video games. I played a video uh, like a first person shooter. I think that it went was in the there. fourth Indiana Jones as well. Mm. There you go. Um, so yeah, this is a article from the Associated Press uh, from yesterday, uh, saying that. Uh, the huge, already damaged radio telescope in Puerto Rico that has played a key role in astronomical discoveries for more than a half a century uh, collapsed on Tuesday. The telescope's 900-ton receiver platform and the Gregorian Dome, uh, a structure as tall as a four-story building that houses secondary reflectors, fell onto the northern portion of the vast reflector dish uh, more than 400 Ack. feet below it. Yeah, uh, it is owned by the uh, U.S. National Science Foundation, or NSF for short. Um, they had uh, so a cable had snapped; a bolt carrying the cable had snapped. Uh, some people have said that it was uh, sabotage. Really? Uh, but uh, a bolt uh, for one of the cables snapped, causing the table cable to come down. It. Uh, destroyed uh, part of the section of the dish, mm. uh, dish. and uh, some engineers came out, looked at it, and said, I, the rest of the cables will support it, you know, but... Uh, Incorrect. Uh, yeah, and then a second cable snapped, uh, so then they came back and said, well, we kind of <laughs> suggest that you evacuate everybody from this uh, particular location. Yeah, yeah. Now, well, prior to the cable under- snapping... Uh, the uh, National Science Foundation had apparently uh, announced that they were going to shut down this particular radio telescope. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so, yeah, I mean, people have spent their lives there. Uh, it's iconic. Everybody recognizes that thing. It's been in a lot of movies. Uh, and you can uh, apparently you can see it from space. Or I'm something, sure or it's something. giant, right? Uh, the dish itself was a thousand foot wide. Hmm. Uh, well, the dish is still a thousand foot wide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so, um, that's a bummer. Yeah. Uh, somebody who did their doctorate got a, uh, Nobel prize from the work that they did at that place. 
Uh, here's a picture of the hanging platform. Yeah, I recognize that. That's been uh, in a lot of movies. Yeah, uh, it's it's quite a. I mean, it, it's pretty amazing. But uh, the the telescope itself was built in in the 1960s with money from the Defense Department amid a push to develop anti ballistic missile defense. Uh, it has endured hurricanes, tropical humidity, and a recent string of earthquakes in its 57-year yeah. operation. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, they got 90,000 visitors a year to the site. Um, yeah, it's just uh, it's just amazing uh, what all that thing has has done. They In the article, they list uh, some of the things that have uh, been discovered uh, due to it. Uh, so, I mean, check out the history of it. It's it's a pretty interesting little slice of history. Um, there you go. Two history segments back uh, to back. That's a shame. It is a shame. Uh, it's pretty iconic, uh, as you had said. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Well, I'm I'm far enough into this to talk about it. You're a little less so. Yeah, because I've been talking. Yeah, <laughs> but here's the thing: this guy is packed with flavor. It's it's. Almost a mild to medium, but probably most people would call it a solid medium. Yeah, I'd put it right in the medium category. Uh, oh, the flavor. Mm-hmm. It is excellent. It, it's just packed with flavors. It's got a bunch of flavors in it, that's for sure. I'm liking the nutty. It's got a nuttiness. And I, love the, I just love the dark wrapper. Oh, and yeah. I like that they put, beautiful wrapper. I like that they put the silver band with it because it just too. pops. It does pop. <laughs> you hurt your finger, huh? Uh, I was bringing wood from the from the wood pile uh, up to the up to the little carrier I have at the house, uh, and I smashed my finger oh. between uh, a piece <laughs> of wood and the wheelbarrow I was using to haul the thing, uh, and it it bruised up and changed multiple different colors. I and I don't bruise easy, so when I bruise, I did something, uh, and that was. A week ago, Oof. and it still yeah, it yeah, still yeah. hurts. It's still got a little color to it. And you forgot and snapped. And I snapped it, <laughs> and yeah, now it hurts some more. <laughs> well, I I love the flavors in this. There's a ton of them: uh, nuttiness, woodiness, oh, that, that earthiness. Well. Uh, it's got a bunch of great flavors, and the fruitiness of the rum goes wonderfully with it. It does. This is a great pairing. Oh yes. And I do like the I do like the nutty flavor that uh, that comes out in the cigar. You got that too. Mm-hmm. I like it's very nice. Uh, thankfully, it's not an acorn flavor. <laughs> uh, I'm not I'm not a huge fan of the acorn. You've flavor. eaten a lot of acorns. I have actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, when did you eat acorns? Oh, we we've all we've lived next to houses that have well, we've lived in houses that have had acorns. Me too, but I, I didn't so, eat them. You didn't gnaw on them? No, we you, had like you, a you, seventy-five foot oak tree. You gnaw on them, and they're they're really bitter. Uh, but if you boil them uh, a lot, <laughs> <laughs> a lot to death. Yeah. Oh, you have to you have to you, you have to constantly boil them, and but eventually that sour flavor uh, goes away, and it's it's kind of nice. Really? Yeah. Huh. Makes a makes pretty good tea. Good information. <laughs> As long as you want a bitter, sour tea. What I do not suggest is uh, pine needle tea. You tried that? Yeah, I don't like it. Who did you try it with? Oh, nobody. No, but you just tried it. Yeah, pine trees are everywhere. You're just like, I'm going <laughs> to boil some pine needles and drink the juice and see what it's like. Well, I, uh, for the for the, the survivalists of the world understand this in that... Uh, uh, the pine tree is probably the the best tree for survival because you could the inner bark you can eat. Um, it the sap helps make fire. The pine cones you can eat. You can make tea out of the needles. You can make tea out of. Uh, yeah, it's like the perfect survival plant. Uh, but I so just, you did it to test your survival. I skills. just really detest pine trees. <laughs> <laughs> I've been around too many of them. I don't like pine trees. Okay. All right. I didn't uh, know this. Well, I'll learn something new every day. Learn something new. Uh, so we're going to take a little break. All right. And uh, we'll see you on the flip side. I'll be right back. Enjoy the any time of the day cigar. 
drunk chicken cigars are nub alicious. So good you'll smoke it to a nub. You can get 10% off your order at drunkchickencigars.com by using the promo code CLM2020. Hey, hey, we're back. We're back. We're back. Our listeners know that because they can hear us. I'm super digging <laughs> this Macazar. Oh, this is this is a really it's a flavor packed. Yeah. It's a really it's really unique. Um I'm I'm liking it a lot. I, I, I get why it's premium. They uh they went the extra mile. I like the aging on this. It's a really good stick. Um I still think I still think I like the red red dot. I think the red dot's my favorite. Okay. Well, I mean that's the one that made them big, right? Uh you have here yeah, I wanted to... Data uh, <clears throat> information on GPS. I love GPS. I didn't realize un- until I read an article recently that um, we're upgrading GPS this year. It started in January, and we're moving to what they call GPS-3. Nice. Which is cool. So, and, and very recently, uh, because we've, we've talked about Elon Musk a lot, um, on November 5th, a SpaceX rocket carried a... a GPS satellite to or- orbit. Nice. Yeah. Um, so there's 31 satellites that make up the GPS. Um, and according to the, the National GPS, Institute. Yeah, it, it, GPS has system in the name, right? Global positioning. No, global positioning satellites. So it's, But it's a system of satellites. It's, it's an integration of 31 satellites, yeah. of which 24 are in use and then the other ones sort of serve as backups and move into position if one of them fails because you need to be in contact direct line of sight with four other satellites in order to triangulate somebody's position on earth i thought it was just three it says four here oh okay Mm. so consider me corrected so for those not familiar with how gps works all these satellites are are very sophisticated clocks the satellite knows where it is, how far it is from the ground, and then it times how long it takes to get to, say, you who have a GPS chip. So you have a GPS chip in your phone, and the four satellites go, hey, that, that phone is where? Or, you're, if, or, or if you're a hiker, a GPS device, but whatever. Where is that GPS chip? Okay, how long did it take you to talk to it? Oh, I took, it took me this long. How long did it take you to talk to it? It took me this long. And so it's just a giant timing mechanism to decide where you are in space based on how long it took your signal to get from it to one of the four satellites. And then they all talk to each other and say, then that means they must be there. Oh, you see, I thought the, <clears throat> I thought the talking between the, sat- the signals happened on your device. Oh, I believe it does, yes. Uh, it's a very weak signal. They just, they, it just constantly I, sends out information. Yeah, I, I just thought it sent out a timestamp, a constant stream yes. of timestamps, and yes. then your device takes the the timestamp from. I thought it was three, but apparently four satellites. Yeah, I think it says four, and uh, combines them or does a calculation on it and says, "Well, this is where you must be in on the planet." Yeah, it says here <clears throat> of the uh, two dozen that are spread out in six orbital planes, you have to be within. View of at least four at any given moment. So it says at least four. Okay. okay. Um, but that's what they are. Basically, they just send you a, a, a time piece of time information, and then you figure out, your, your chip figures out where you are based on the time it took each of those satellites to tell you what time it was. <laughs> um, so I think that's really cool. They, so I think right now we, we're accurate to like... A, Five meter radius, so it'll tell you within fifteen feet for for the civilian market. Yeah, I we don't know what the government can do. I'm sure it's it's tenfold that right now. Yeah, it's, it's always it's, been a factor of magnitude. Yeah, order of magnitude. It's, it's always been better. Uh, I do like um, I do like this. Uh, I don't. Uh, I know it, this is your. Right up, but I, I like this fourth paragraph here because I remember <laughs> this event. Right. Uh, so it says in the in in the seventies, GPS was military only. Yeah. And the Secret world of. did not know about it. No. But uh, in nineteen eighty three, after Korean air uh, Korean air 
Airlines passenger jet straight into Soviet airspace and got shot down, killing all 269 people on board. Uh, see, it, it says 1983, and it says President Ronald Reagan. Uh, I understand it was year a uh, couple of years after the fact, but I only thought it was a couple of years. I didn't think it was because. Uh, but no, I guess Reagan started in eighty four and eighty. <clears throat> Reagan started in eighty. I'm sorry, eighty to eighty eight. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so President Ron, Ronald Reagan declassified GPS uh, to given civilian aircraft to give to given civilian aircraft access uh, to the navigational signals. Uh, yeah, now it was it wasn't spot on measurements, um, but it was close enough to determine your. It your was close space. enough to determine that the Russians shot him down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, really, really, the thing was: Are you in international airspace, or are you invading a country's right. airspace? Right. Um, but I think I, I what this article doesn't say that I think was going on at the time was that uh, Russia was claiming they had a boundary outside of the international boundary. Yeah, this really wasn't about the shooting down. It was about GPS. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so anyway, but I remember I remember that event. Hmm. I remember it occurred, but I don't remember it as clear as you do. But here's the cool thing. Here's what GPS-3 is going to do. Tell it's, us. It's going to give you signals up to three times stronger. So instead nice. of waving your, your phone in the air to find the right thing, <laughs> you, you can get and, – and really this is for cities, right? Because mm -hmm. when you have tall buildings blocking the signal, because it's a direct line of sight signal, period. Yep. yep. Um, so it can bounce off walls and maybe make it to you, but you lose signal every time. There's a reflect, refraction and a reflection. Well, it, it, it's a radio signal. <clears throat> right. So it, it will degrade over, right. over. So if you increase it by a factor of three, you definitely improve GPS signal in densely populated areas. And for that matter, improve your signal uh, for in, in, in open hiking, you know, skiing, climbing, whatever, that kind of stuff. So that's really nice. And then... One thing that I hadn't thought of, it'll have eight times the anti-jamming capability. So it's pretty easy to jam. Yeah, and well, and this will be less easy. easy to jam, which I don't think people are generally trying to jam, you know, you and me. Uh, but that means, again, that means that the government must have a much better anti-jamming signal. You betcha. <laughs> you betcha. Um, and, and, you know, they have a 15-year lifespan, which is twice that of the earlier generation, so we won't have to put them up as often because they're kind of pricey. Yeah. Uh, now, if you want to Google it, uh, the new civilian frequency uh, – oh, so there's two frequencies now. That's another thing. We've got your standard mm. GPS signal and a new frequency called LC1. And besides that signal strength uh, improvement, it's now compatible with Galileo, which is EU's counterpart to GPS, which means – You'll have twice the number of signals coming to you nice. because you'll have the EU signal, Galileo, and the U.S. domestic GPS. Because the EU said, let's not depend on the U.S. for everything. How about we not and do that? And that's kind of smart. I wouldn't want to depend on another country for this kind of thing. Yeah. Especially when they said, the National Institute of Standards and Technology said, the GPS has about a $1 billion per day positive economic impact on the U.S., I believe it. Yeah, that makes almost any price for those satellites worth to put up. Mm -hmm. So, the first of the GPS-3 generation of satellites were built by Lockheed Martin uh, and lifted off in 2018 and became operational January of this year. Um, the second and third became operational later uh, in the year and the one that lifted off November 5th which is the fourth in the series, will be ready this first week of December. Um, Lockheed Martin also has a contract to deliver 10 more uh, at an average cost of $529 million apiece. Wow. But they say that the last two will come in around $200 million apiece. Mm -hmm. So it's just, you know, as you learn, as you go along, right? Yep. Which is awesome because that's only half the ones we need. Um, when that's done, it'll move ahead with a batch called GPS-3F. And an additional 22 satellites 
to continue replacing older models through the coming decade. So GPS, they're even, you think GPS is great. It's going to be even better. <laughs> and you know, GPS isn't just driving your car around. It does a lot of things, a lot of things. So this is, uh, this is super cool. I love GPS. It is one of the coolest things I've ever heard of because you're talking about time scales on nanoseconds. And all the satellites have to be in sync. They all have to have the same time at the same time to nanoseconds. Well, <clears> if probably my, less. If my understanding is right, they all, well, within the line of sight, they, they all talk to one another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Constantly. So that they can stay they can stay in sync. And they're constantly sending signals down to Earth. And they all have atomic clocks on them to try to stay in sync. Even between the times that they talk to each other. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, uh, I mean, the idea itself is super simple. It is, but right. it's very difficult to implement, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's kind of like, like the pencil in that way. Yeah. Right? You can't just make a pencil because right. of No one person can make a pencil. Right, because of everything that's involved in doing right. it. Uh, just if you think no one person can make a, a a cell phone, just remember no one person can make a pencil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's just one of the coolest things we've done um, in a long time. I, I think. I I well, I'm I'm a I'm a full fan of the GPS system. Hmm. Well, even well, for that matter, the atomic clock which is critical to yes. the GPS. The atomic clock prior to GPS was the, one of the coolest things mm -hmm. we've ever invented. Because, you know, when Britain first offered, I think, a million dollars or a million pounds to whoever could make a pocket watch, right? They wanted to put clocks on ships, mm -hmm. right? So that they could navigate the seas more efficiently, effectively. Yeah, and accurately. And accurately. And... It comes down to, if even if you're navigating with the, whatever, a sextant and the stars, if you don't know what time it is, yeah, exactly, <laughs> and you don't know what time it is between yesterday and today, so I believe they're for, I, I'm guessing here, you should look it up, it's super cool, they had a race to make a pocket watch, and a million dollars well, if I If was I recall correctly, uh, Still Neil kind of deGrasse affordable. Tyson's uh, last book... Talked about that had a that's had a complete where chapter read, yeah. on that. That's where I read it because yeah. I read his book. Yeah, it was yeah. a good book. It was a, it was a good I book. didn't care for the political did aspects I give it to of you? it. Or uh, is that because I? Yeah, I, okay. I, yeah. I think I, I think I borrowed it from you. Uh, but yeah, it's it, it was a great book. Yeah, it was. Uh, I highly recommend anybody picking it up. I would too. I would too. Yeah. And just you know, the, I think the first request was that it be accurate to within a second per day. And now we're like, that's garbage. Oh, yeah. That's complete garbage that's now. That's <laughs> garbage. But worth a million dollars in whatever, 17, 16, whatever it was. Long time ago. I don't ago. remember. Yeah. But it was, I mean, knowing what time it is, or more importantly, knowing how much time has passed between two moments. Yes. Is critical to navigation. And whether you're navigating a ship or you're navigating a car, you're navigating. Well, and not only that, I mean, what, semiconductors rely heavily upon time. Yeah. Uh, you have to. Yeah. And, and I, um, I, I mean, I use, you use it for tons of stuff. Like, I didn't remember where I left my iPad. And so I turned on my phone and I said, find my iPad. And I'm like, okay, good news is I didn't leave it somewhere else. It's somewhere in the house. <laughs> and as I walked around, my little blue dot moved within my house. <laughs> and I, I, I know I got somewhat close to where it said my pad was. I said, make a chime. And then I picked it up. I mean, that's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Yep. Well, when and then my, I remembered what a retard I was for leaving it where I <laughs> where I left it. Like, what's uh, wrong with me? One of my iPhones, I had a iPhone six, I think it was iPhone seven. I don't remember. Uh, 
but it was a black iPhone in a black case. <laughs> and uh, we were in Dad's truck at the Garland house, working on the Garland house, and I had set my phone down on the black bumper. Mm-hmm. And uh, needed a, it. needed a needed a blade, so you know, Dad went off to go get a blade. Turns out I didn't have my phone. Uh, I had left it on the bumper. Looked like it was with you though. <laughs> it kept going where you went <laughs> for a while. But <laughs> uh, yeah, so I borrowed the neighbor's phone to call my wife to do the find my iPhone thing, and she's like, "Well, it looks like it's at the end of the alley." <laughs> So I went and looked for it, and even though it was smashed, the digitizer was gone, yeah. the screen was gone. The GPS chip worked. The GPS worked. Battery worked. The, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the only thing I wasn't able to get off of it was pictures, photos, <clears throat> because uh, to get the photos off, you have to put in the passcode. And you couldn't see And I screen. had no screen or digitizer to be able to put in a passcode, so mm -hmm. I, I lost the pictures that were stored on the phone, but... All the rest of the data that was on the phone, I was able to get. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're halfway through. I want to talk about this guy. I'm loving this guy. This is a really great stick. Uh, I'm getting clove now. I love how you know much I love clove. Cohiba just did fabulous with this stick. Yeah, I love this stick. This, I'm getting I'm getting a lot more spices, and they're all like mellow baking spices. They're all super pleasant. I'm getting like. Like like leather and coffee and and and, and uh, what do you call it? Uh, Not cloves. Any coffee. Really? No. I I I get the clove that you're talking about. I love the clove. Just a touch of the leather that you're talking. about. I live about. for the clove. But I I don't get any coffee out of it. Mm, loving it. Loving it. And and that's funny because it's more like your yeah. coffee. Like I put sugar in my coffee, but it's not <laughs> it's not sugary coffee. It's that bitter. <laughs> Black coffee is what I'm getting. Black coffee does not have to be bitter. It does if it's in a cigar. <laughs> <laughs> this this guy has so many wonderful mellow baking spices. It's great, and I can taste them. That's the awesome part. It's it's got a lot of different spices. In I mean, it. if I can taste sure. them, anybody can taste them because you know, allergy man. But it, yeah, I, it's yeah, it's it's. Got some complexity it's to wonderful. it. Wonderful, really nice. Um, gushing, I'm gushing. And even though it is complex, you can just leave that off to the side and enjoy yourself. You could, but I, honest to God, I wouldn't do that with this cigar. That would be a waste. This one you have to sit down and nom on. <laughs> nom nom nom. <laughs> oh, uh, totally. This this guy is a work of art. I'm loving this. Now I got one beef. My draw is a little firm. That's my beef. Okay, your your draw was firm. The, I, you I, didn't get that? No, <clears throat> not What's at all. Beef? Uh, I, I've got a beef that isn't really a beef. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but I'm gonna I'm gonna snap a picture of it here. There, there's a, a veininess in it. No. What are you looking at? The band doesn't match. Oh, mine was. Mine was even more offset than that. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Mine was definitely cattywampus. But, but I am I am totally going to forgive that for the flavor in this thing. Oh, my I'm on God. A, I'm on a string of ashing myself. You are. You, you've <laughs> just done dumping ash all yourself. Well, and and last night when we were we were on the call, I was smoking uh, uh, one of the Perdomos, and I, I had a... I wasn't paying attention to it, and I, I had a nice, probably two and a half inch ash. <laughs> but I, I wasn't necessarily you paying, paying attention. Right? Yeah, uh, and all of a sudden it just went thump. <laughs> it's like, oh, why did not pay attention to that? Mm. I don't. Uh, uh, people do, you know, long ash yeah, competitions, yeah. things not, like that. This is silly. I'm, I'm, I'm not all about that. Um, I, I think it's cool when I look down and I see. What for me is a long ash. Yeah. Uh, but the first thing I want to do after doing yeah, that no, is just tap it because totally. I don't want it to fall all over me. I'm with you. So this guy, wonderful. Yet all the fruitiness, all the vanilla and everything is awesome in this rum. This is a... The, the rum goes great with this cigar. This is going to be one of my primo pairings for next year. 
I think it should be. Oh, easy. <laughs> this is, right now, this is an easy decision. This guy is great with this uh, rum. And I'm, I'm kind of surprised. Um, I mean, we, we had tasted this rum. And we've had this cigar. And we've had this cigar. And that's I've, why I put it together. I, <laughs> I, I would have not had thought of them as really? a primo pairing. Oh, well, I didn't know they were primo pairings on them together. But I'll give you that. This is, this is a primo pairing. Yeah, this is really good. I'm I'm loving this. I this like is that, uh, I like that band. It's I a really good band. Do. You know, if it were put on straight. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you know, for the for the cost of these sticks, uh, just a little extra care on okay. the band placement. All right, all right, I'll buy that. Just you know, <clears throat> I'll buy that. I'm, I'll it, tell Sean. Nothing to do, <laughs> yeah. Nothing to do with the smoke at all. It's no, just, no, no. It's just yeah, I know. care. Right? It, it feels like the attention to detail that was missed. Yes, right? yes. And then it makes you wonder what other attention to detail. Was <laughs> but I, mm, I can not. I'm loving this guy. Oh my! No, but the the new boxes for these things look awesome. Oh, oh! Have you seen the new Opus X twentieth year anniversary box? No. Oh, it's amazing. Oh, it looks gorgeous. Is there a picture on on Half Wheel? Uh, no. I oh. they don't. They actually had it in Fuego. Really? Yeah, they had them in Fuego. Oh. I almost picked one up just to say I had one, <laughs> but I think they were thirty. Well, you like the Opus Xs. Everybody likes the Opus Xs. <laughs> But but thirty dollars. I'm like I'm just not doing it. I'm just not doing it. But I probably should. I'm fifty. Bingo. Yeah. You know what? I'll go see if I can pick uh pick two up. Two, Bottom boom. Two, Sixty bucks for two cigars. Is that sound, <laughs> it sounds retarded? What is wrong with us? It sounds retarded, but you should do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll look. I'll look. I'll look. That's why we have a business account. I it just uh you know how cheap I am. Yeah, no, and I I can't blame you. It makes you cough thinking of thirty dollars a stick. <laughs> of course, even at tw- this this guy was twelve. You go, okay, Mister Cheap Man, you bought a twelve dollar <laughs> one hour burn it to the ground <laughs> stick. I don't feel like you're that cheap, but you know, everywhere else in my life, I kind of am. <laughs> Liquor and cigars, one of the few places I'm not, and even they well, have and, limits. And in the last episode, we talked about your vacation to Florida. <laughs> you know what? Though that wasn't that expensive. And you've been to Fiji. We drove. Been... <laughs> we drove to Florida, and I think the rental was like, I don't even know, eight hundred bucks. Not a big deal. All right. So we gonna we uh extend this, or we gonna we gonna. I think we can wrap it up. I am, okay. I am, I am good. I'm happy. Oh hell yeah! Super happy. Talk about it, dude. This cigar rocks. This is a must pick up. Even for me, even over the red dot and the the Fiji rum, it's cheap. Pick it up and go with it. Yeah, it's that that rum is pretty amazing for the price. Mm. Definitely. Totally. Uh, this cigar, pure winner. Absolute winner. <laughs> I feel so much better. Heck yeah.